Hello and welcome back to Survival Sea Lab. I am Modi Apparandus. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at the extractor from Rotary Craft again and set up an automated process to deal with that and multiplier ores several times over. And then also take a look at the bedrock breaker and how to obtain some bedrock dust. So let's get going. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna be looking back at Rotary Craft again here. And I did a little bit of work off camera here and I set up what's going to be our automated system for uh, using specific ores. Now I'm not gonna set this up with everything because it'd be way too much and we'd get overloaded. But what I'm gonna do is filter out iron, uranium and yellowite and gold because those things we use a lot in the different mods. Uh, so what this is basically set up to do is this everything uh, gold, iron, and uh, uranium and yellowite are getting separated onto this ender chest here from our quarry and they're getting pulled into this system down here. Now down here I have the grinder set up with the uh, proper speeds and everything like that set up on here. These are not going right now because we're missing a crucial component which we'll get to later. So basically what this is going to do is supply the water, it's going to do everything it needs to do and it has a buffer chest right here so that nothing gets backed up at all. Uh, it should flow right into here so iron ore is getting separated in here for instance and then it should go and distribute that back into the system then. Uh, this will need to be cooked up still, it'll just produce the flakes. We'll have to set up a system to bring this chest here. This is the blue chest. Uh, we'll have to set it up so that the flakes get separated out into a uh, processed again. I could also set up a rotary craft thing down here. Maybe I'll do that too. And just through the whole process down here and create ingots out of the whole thing. So uh, we'll do that in a moment here. We'll need one more, uh, one more of these, I think, to do that. One of these magnetostatic engines. But the other thing we're missing here is a CVT. And a CVT is what's, uh, I was looking at whitestone here. Uh, let's do CVT. Uh, so CVT is a unit that can be variable speeds of torque and uh, basically it, it takes the place of all of your gearboxes. So you don't use, use any gearboxes when you have this thing. You can you can set it up with belts and use as much torque as you need to up to 16 times. Uh, so we need to make this. We need to actually bedrock dust to make these shaft units, uh, which is unfortunate because we don't have that yet. So we have to actually find a process to get some. So I'm going to grab one of these magnetostatic engines. I'm actually going to grab our Tesseract for now, too. Let's bring this with us, and I'll need uh, another cable, one of these conduits. I'll, I'll just grab one from here, I suppose. Uh, we'll grab the whole shoot match from here, right here. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so as we use white stone for the floor here, uh, I'm going to use this a lot more in builds, because I do like the way it looks in a lot of ways. Uh, I use this on the... Where else did I put this? I think I put it in the, the subfloor over here. Uh, but I'm going to be building another building very soon. And I'm going to need a lot because it's going to be my biggest building we've ever made here. Uh, it's going to be 64 by 64 roughly. So it's going to need about 4,000 blocks is what I figured out. Um, just based on the math I've done in my head for it. Uh, so that could be wrong about that. But man, we're going to need a lot of materials for that one. So I think this is going to make the most sense because we can use regular stone to make this and feathers, which we have tons of. Uh, so yeah, six, like roughly 62 stacks of uh, white stone is what we'll need for that building. Uh, anyways, let's get that bedrock breaker set up here. So let's go back up to the farm area and we'll scamper over there. And so I already made a bedrock breaker. Uh, this requires obsidian and a couple other um, HLSA steel things. And so we'll grab that, we'll grab our diamond gearbox. I got a bucket of lubricant here. We'll need that as well for the gearbox. Uh, we'll need a couple bevel gears. And I think that should do it. I think we have everything we need to do this, correct? I'm just gonna double check in here quick. Okay, so I think we can do everything here. Let's head down to the basement here. And I think there's some bedrock nearby that I have exposed someplace around here. Uh, we're really close to bedrock right now. We're at 12. We're at Y of 12 right now. I think there's some. Here we go. I, I made a little hole here to get down to it. Okay, so this is a good spot. Uh, oh, we got gold over here. I'm missing some of this. So we need to grab one of these to set up my uh, system here so I can get that sorted out. Because I couldn't find any ore for some reason. I was having the toughest time, but I was sitting right here next to where I was. So we already have the setup here for uh, some space. Um, some torches down here so we don't get mobs spawning. Actually, I actually have my uh, my fancy Lux capacitors that I can shoot around here. And we'll make sure there's enough light because actually with Bedrock here, it's very foggy and that kind of thing. All right, so let's put the Bedrock Breaker. Now, the Bedrock Breaker has to face downwards, first of all. So you need to put it down and turn it around right away. Uh, so we'll figure this out as we go here. Turn this around so it's facing downwards. Now, this will drill down uh, to... Uh, it won't do the last block below the voids or right above the void. So it won't do, you won't be able to fall through or anything like that. We're at four right now. So it should be able to break at least three, four blocks out of this. Um, so then we go with the uh, bevels on top of that. We'll put the bevel gear right on top of that and set the outputs to, I believe it's output is white or light blue rather. And the white, the other one is black, purple, orange. This is fine. It'll work with orange. 
Okay, so we'll set it up going this direction here. Next thing we'll need is our gearbox. And before we forget and damage it, we'll put some lubricant in there right away. And we'll put that in there like this. And now it should be good. And then we will put down our magnetostatic engine. And we'll flip this around. And then we put down our redstone conduit and the uh, tesseract next. So tesseract on the bottom here. Around right the back here, rather. All right, so that is receiving energy from, let's grab it from the production power. And that should be ready to go. See if it's receiving enough energy. It is not receiving enough energy. Hmm. It's set up to send only, oh, that's the reason. Okay, so receive only, don't do anything with the materials. All right, so now it should be getting energy in here. Perfect. And now we can set this up to full blast. So bring it all the way up to speed here because we will need a, another 8,000 for this. It requires, I believe we get our angular transducer out there, it'll tell us that the speed is insufficient and it requires 8,000 uh, Newton meters of torque. So let's flip this around and it should be going. And then this should, oh, it's not quite set up right here. Let's get this set up correctly. So I said output size to be down and the input side, let me see this again here. Input side is black. Input size black. Okay, so now it should be getting a power, and it is. It's getting what it needs. The radiance per second doesn't really matter. The speed, the speed will make it go faster, but really there's not a good way. This is either multiplying torque or it's multiplying speed, and we need multiplying the torque right now. Uh, because it's out outputting, uh, because this is outputting, come on, let's click it here. Let's click, because it's outputting uh, 2,000 Newton meters of torque, we need that times four, so we can't actually increase the speed on it any more than it is. But it says that the operation speed on it is 16.45 seconds. And now what it does is, you can already see it working away here. It's gonna break the bedrock slowly. Uh, and what it will do, it takes about 17 cycles for it to go. So 16 seconds times 17 is basically how long it's gonna take us to get one block of bedrock broken. And that should give us about two or three, I believe, um, bedrock dust. So we'll need to do a couple blocks before we get out of here, but we can actually just let this thing go for a bit and uh, we'll come back and check on it later. So the other thing I want to work on, let's fly back out of here. Let's take a look at some of the underwonderful toys we can make with uh, Rotary Craft here. There's a lot of cool things that we could make. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna take a look at the cool toys that are involved in Rotary Craft. Uh, there's a lot of cool things we can make. Um, one of the cool things that kind of intrigued me was this ultrasound. This allows you to detect blocks and uh, find out like ore veins and that kind of thing based on density and also reveal silverfish blocks and, and uh, so you can see them using this ultrasound here. That'd be kind of cool. I might make this at some point, but we're not quite in the mining phase yet. Now, if we go try to find a stronghold or something like this, being able to detect silverfish would be super helpful um, that we don't accidentally mine into some or something like that. Uh, the other thing we want to make though today is a gravel gun. So we need a dispenser, a chest, and just some HLSA steel, and we can make that. So let's make ourselves a dispenser, uh, first of all here. And we need a bow for this. So we gotta make a bow here. Put that in the bin then. And we got it, okay. And so then we need also a chest. Do we have a chest in here already? Probably. No, we don't, okay. So we'll make a chest quick here. And then we'll take this over. I think all the HS HSLI steel's over here. I think that should be everything we need then. Do we have any extra gears? I don't have any extra gears right now. We do have slimes though someplace here. Oh, here he is. Hey, buddy, got here. All right, uh, that's taken care of. The ferocious slime is no more. Um, okay, so we need to put it like this to make some gears. And I think that should be all we need then. We need two gears, HLSA steel, and we have a gravel gun. All right, so uh, tool, tool charge is depleted. So we need to actually charge this tool up using a, what is it? What do you have to use here? Let's, let's take a look at the rotary craft here because I believe there's a, there's springs inside of this basically that need to be charged. So uh, let's find what we're looking for here. All right, so I figured out what we need to do. It's kind of tough to find in the book here, but what we actually need to make is a coil winder. And this coil winder is gonna provide us with the ability to uh, wind our spring up that I created. And the spring, once you put it in a crafting table with the item, it will transfer its energy into the items, just like that. Didn't have anything in there at the moment. So we just took it right back out. Didn't make any change there. But once we put some power into this thing, and some energy in the spring, it will uh, transfer that to the, the gravel gun for us. Uh, and then every time we use it, the, the energy will get used up a little bit more. So let's go down here and we can actually use our, uh, our uh, magnetostatic engines to use this uh, coil winder for right now. It's not a perfect situation, we'll make a new one for it. Oh, we have to make the coil winder first though. 
So let's go upstairs and make that quick here. Shouldn't be too difficult. It just takes tw times two gears. And uh, also that'll require some shafts. And uh, I think it's just base panels then too. Uh, so let's grab stuff out of here. And base panel here. And then we'll go make our coil winder. All right, so we have everything for the coil winder here and we've got it crafted. Now let's take this over to our magnetostatic engine and we'll, we'll charge up our first spring to get our uh, gravel gun loaded here. Now we gotta turn this around so it's getting input from the back. Like that, and it should work then. Put this with the spring. Put it in there. And then we'll turn this on. And it's getting more and more energy into it and eventually it will break. So we'll have to see how much this will last. Let's put 100 in there. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's put 100 in there. Take it out. I don't know. I don't know how much work these things can take. You can actually make an improved version using diamonds, though, which might be a good way. If we're going to use this gravel gun, if it ends up being really cool, uh, we'll use this again in the future, I'm sure. So what we can do now is put this wine spring into the work table and then put the gravel gun in there. And you can see the gravel gun now received power from the wine spring. Uh, so now we have all the power transferred over. And I don't know what the maximum power for this thing is, but it's dealing uh, four hearts per, per shot now. So let's let's go grab some gravel. And uh, I don't know what else we need to do with this thing. I think it might just go. Um, so we'll grab a stack of gravel out of here and we'll take it downstairs and see if it works. Let's see what we have a target here. Oh, there we go. It worked. So you have to find what you're looking for. Uh, there we go. Took that bat out, no problem. Let's go find... Oh, God. Let's go find a, uh, a better target here. There's some gotta be some zombies around here someplace. Here we go. There'll be something down here, I'm sure. Oops. Let's see here. Oh, I hear something. I hear an Enderman. Now, Endermen are immune to projectiles, though, so I don't think it's gonna work. They always jump away before they get hit. Oh, here's zombies. I hear a lot of things. This place is too well lit. I'm doing too good a job of lighting the area. Problem right now. So this tunnel you notice here is pretty long. It goes all the way back to my original, uh, my my cherry home base here. Uh, so I made this a long time ago. I never really use it that much. We don't never need to go back here. But this takes us right into the cave system for the cherry home, actually. Um, so there should be some enemies down here for sure. So as you can see, this is my old staircase. We're revisiting the homestead. Is it nighttime or daytime? Uh, it's daytime. Oh, here we go. Here's some enemies. All right, let's get these guys. Let's give them a taste of the old gravel gun. Oh, wow, I fell straight down. I guess something blew that up at some point here. I'll have to fix that later. But like I said, I never come over here anymore, so it uh, doesn't really matter that much. All right, you, come here. There we go. Seven damage. That's not too bad. Three shots and uh, consumed. We've consumed only like five gravel so far. Six gravel, something like that. Now, can we get this guy? Oh, we can get him. Oh, he's got a back bag. Um, I don't think those things work in this version of the of Monster, actually. They have those Ender backpacks, which are kind of rare, but I don't think it actually works, to be honest with you. Um, I might be wrong, but I think that in this version of uh, this mod pack, it does not actually, can't actually obtain that. Um, I have tried before. They have to basically get the Enderman to pick up the Ender chest, and they'll trade you a backpack for it, basically, but it does not seem to work. All right, so we have the, now we got the gravel gun. It seems like it'll be pretty cool. Uh, let's head back to the base and see how our bedrock breaker is doing. All right, so let's see how the breaker is doing. It should be okay. It should be done by now. It's been long enough, I think. Let's take a look. It looks like it's still running, but it is done. So now we need just need to right click and we'll collect all of the dust from it, right? It might have fallen down the hole here. Oh, there we go. Keep clicking, you'll get all of it out. So it got, uh, we got 10, that's actually enough. We don't have to do any more. We just got this whole section done. All right, so let's grab this thing off here because uh, we need it back for our other area here. We'll make some more of these for the Bedrock Breaker and that kind of thing uh, later. But for now, we need to go set up our new system here. So now that we have this, we can make some CVTs and this just requires a couple of these uh, Bedrock Dusts to make Bedrock Shafts. And let's go up here and start making that. Uh, so, we can get bedrock shafts with, uh, I believe, just a regular shaft. And, uh, oh, I took all my ingots out of here, too. Let's grab this, then. And uh, we can make it with regular shafts and then uh, bedrock. And it should make bedrock shafts. So we'll go like this and put it in here. 
and we need eight of those. Perfect. Okay, so now we can actually use these to make our CVTs. Uh, so we need to make uh, shaft bearings, some screens, so we'll need some other things as well. Uh, so I'm gonna grab those materials and I'll be right back. All right, so I think I have everything made now that we can make our CVT finally. I made the uh, circuit board. I made the uh, shaft bearings. We need four of those. We'll need some bedrock shafts and the screen, and that should all be put together to make a CVT here. And we've gotten it. Okay, so the CVT also requires lubricant, so we need to get another bucket of that. Uh, I have a reservoir with some of it in here, and we'll just lay this down for a second and grab our trusty bucket out and uh, put just uh, click that, and it'll fill it with lubricant. And we'll come back and take care of that later. Okay, so let's go set this thing up here and get it grinding. All right, so it should be able to extract these ores pretty much right away here. Uh, so what we'll do is lay down the CVT. Oh, you know what? There's one more component I forgot. There's always something else. Uh, let's go back up to the farm here quick and I'll grab what we need here. So for the CVT to work, we actually need belts and belts are made with leather. And we can get some leather from this bucket here, I'm sure. Ah, uh, we got 64 leather in here. Great. Okay, so to make a CVT belt, we need, a, I think we just need uh, leather and an HLSA steel, correct? Yes. Okay, so we'll make a bunch of those. We'll need a bunch, actually. So I'll just actually make as many as I can here, because we'll need them all. Uh, if we want to have all these things running, we'll need them all. Okay, so 16 belts. That should be plenty to get started here. Let's go back and set it up now. All right, so the CVT is ready. We'll fill it with lubricant and now it's ready to go it's got the uh now what we do is put the belt in and we tell it what output we want it to be at and for this particular operation we want it four and we multiply multiplying speed just like it is and actually we can make, make sure we can actually make this go faster i think um but we can we can see how it goes here first so let's uh let's turn this bad boy on and get extracting all right so that should be enough speed here and it's getting enough power and it's already begun extracting some uranium ore. So this should pump in new materials as they come. Uh, yellow right is in here. Iron is going into here. And then I should set this output here with gold. And I think I have some of my pack here and everything should be set up then. So basically gold and iron are going to separate it out. Um, I could probably put gold and iron together in the same one. Um, and then just put whatever in the last one. Uh, so let's actually put that here. And we'll do a whitelist for gold here. And we'll grab an iron out of here as well. Whitelist iron on here. And now it's set up to sort out gold and iron. It's going to round robin anything else back to over here. Uh, so we'll just set this to round robin. And then it'll sell. It's sending only yellow right and uranium into this first one here. And then this one is sending the iron gold. And this one it'll send whatever it wants. Uh, so that should be enough to keep it pretty much from overflowing, I think. Even if we have a gigantic quarry set up. It should go. And this is enough speed. It doesn't have any water. Oh, it's not getting any water from the thing here. That's okay. Let's do that. Now, it should enough have enough water. Oh, you know why? Because we need to put the water from the side. Oh, it came in then. So why isn't it taking any water then? Mm, that's a mystery. Needs water. Is this not running anymore? Oh, it's out of power. Oh, that's because we uh, don't have our Tesseract set up anymore. That's right. We took it away so we could set up our breaker and we never set it back up again. So uh, let's put this back in and we'll replace that missing panel here. And now it should be ready to go. Okay, cool. And now getting enough power, it's got enough water, it's got enough everything. So it's gonna be producing ingots for us. And then we'll set up a process over here to get our ingots processed here shortly. Now what we're gonna actually build uh, over here should be really cool. It's going to be another thing from Rotary Craft, and we'll set that up next episode. So I hope you enjoyed this little look at Rotary Craft and our Bedrock Breaker. We got the gravel gun now, which is pretty amazing. Uh, it only fires at entities, so I can't just fire it off willy-nilly here. But uh, it works really nicely. Uh, nice projectile weapon, better than a arrow. So I would, I'm going to definitely approve this over uh, using bows and arrows for sure, because we can actually increase this, the power on this by increasing the, uh, the available torque on it, the, the, kilojou the kilojoules there. Uh, anyways, I've been Modi. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with more Survival Sea Lab next time. Have a good night.